So after having talked about the uh, way of how to make lists or how to work on lists and Lambda with Lambda accessions and the func tools, there's a more Pythonic way to do this, and that's comprehensions. Comprehensions actually, actually, it's really not much, but I use it all the time. So it's just a nice, small, very easy to understand piece of syntax, and I use it in literally almost every other line of my code. So comprehensions are special syntax that simplify the creation of collections. So you make one collection, for example, from another collection. How would we do this normally? So for example, we wanted to get a list of all squares. This is what we would do normally or in other programming languages. We have the original list, then we create a new empty list, and then we loop over all elements of the original one and append, and then whatever operation we want to do on the element of the original list. And the list comprehension is simply these three lines merged into one line. So if it's a list comprehension, we have the line i squared for i in original numbers with brackets around this. And these all three lines appear in here. So we have the for i in original numbers, which is here. We have well appending the i squared. We don't have to explicitly append it because it implicitly makes this list and appends it to there. And around our expression here, we have uh, the literal of what we want to create. So if we want to create a list, we need the list, um, the list literals. Okay, so we know that this here creates an empty list, right? So the type of this is a list. So we have basically, this here is again, a generator. This is another way of writing generators. And outside we write well, and make this generator a list please. And now this one line replaces this three lines. And that's really practical. There's not much syntax to it, but it's just these three lines in one line because you really need it all the time. So the general syntax for comprehension is, first of all, the literal, and then expression for element in iterable, and then optionally this if filter condition. And we see over this if filter condition, again, filtering. So this is actually the preferred way, or rather one of the two ways in my opinion, the better one, how to filter lists. Okay, so imagine we have this original list of tuples here, one true, two false, three false, and so on. And now we wanted to get only those elements from this list where the second argument here is true. Yes, we could do this with a func tools filter, but a list comprehension is, in my opinion, more obvious. So if we do it with the normal list, we'd have to loop over all the original values, we have to create a new list, loop over all virtual values, and then if the second element if is true, then we append it to our only true list. And the simpler syntax, the list comprehension syntax for this, well, first of all, only true is equals, and then we want to make a list, and then what to do with the values from old list, we want to take the first one, just so we get it here, and then the for loop like syntax, and then the filtering, the if condition. So this here now filters and only takes those elements of this list for which the second argument is true. It's i0 for i in original values if i1 is true. That makes total sense. So note that this here is optional, this filter condition, and we don't need it. We didn't have it here. And um, you can also provide alternatives. So if you don't watch on the filter, but do something else with the values that do not satisfy your condition, we instead use a ternary condition. Now this is a different thing. So if we are filtering and we only want these values for which a condition holds, we write this if in the end. But if we want to do something else with the values that don't fulfill a condition, we have to use a ternary expression. And we've already seen before that a ternary expression simply returns one thing. So, for example, if I have the term condition 2, if, I don't know, 2 bigger than 1 else 1, this simply returns 2. And if the condition here would be vice versa, it would simply return 1. Okay, so basically we only have this, if we have here a ternary condition, this also boils down to just one literal. And so if we want to do something with the values from the old list, instead of just losing them, we'd have this syntax line of a ternary expression at front. We could even filter afterwards. Okay, so this is simply a ternary expression that creates an object. Creates an object. Okay. And now um, I told you already that basically what's inside here is simply a generator. 
And then we say what we want to pack this generator, what kind of collection we want to pack this generator into. And just as we are creating, uh, as we are creating lists, we can create dictionaries. Syntax here is a tiny bit different because we have to write the key, colon, and then the value. But just like this, we create a dictionary. This is a really nice way of fastly creating lists or dictionaries. And if we only have this num squared for num and, and then a list of numbers, what does this return? Why doesn't this actually return anything? Put it in parentheses. Now we see this here is a generator object. So we see this is how we also, it's a compact way to create generators. Again, we're creating generators. Um, so imagine if we create a generator that gives back i for i in range 10. And then we, first if we print it, it says it's a generator object. And then we can call next on it. We can call next on it again. And then if we then convert this generator into, so first of all, we don't print next. So this here takes the zero out of this generator. This here then takes the one and prints it. And this here takes the rest of the of what's left in this generator, makes a list of, the, a list of this. And because we already used up two elements of the generator, now it's less. Okay, so generally this comprehends create a generator and this generator can then be packed into every other element. And believe me, list comprehensions, I use them all the time and they make your code so much more clear and obvious. So for example, I had the scream function in an earlier video of this week. This is a way how we would create it in one line. So we have the screen function, the strings and the keyword arguments. And then we simply, what I did in three lines before, we now do in one line. So I want to print i.upper for i in strings and pass this to the print function and take the original keyword arguments. So now if we have this, then we can scream, hello, I am Chris, it will scream to me, hello, I am Chris. 